Hi, this is Muni. I am a solutions architect with Amazon Web Services based out of Seattle, Washington. In this video, I am going to show you the difference between always on and on demand fleet types for AppStream 2.0. When you create a fleet, you have the option to run the fleet either in always on or on demand type. Lot of customers ask us the difference between these two options and the advantage of choosing one over the other. So let's dive into the details of it. To help you understand the difference, I have launched both always on and on demand fleets running three streaming instances on each fleet type. For always on fleet, as you can see, all the streaming instances are up and running. What this means is these streaming instances are readily available for the user session. Whereas for on demand fleet, all the streaming instances are in a standby state. Think of standby state as a hibernating state where the streaming instances are in a sleeping mode. The running instances, as you can see, have a green border around it. This is to indicate they are up and running and readily available for the user connection. Whereas the standby instances have a dotted yellow border to indicate they are not ready for the user session. This coloring is just to easily differentiate between a running instance and a standby instance for this demo. Now let's see how the connection experience varies between two users where one user is connecting to always on fleet and the other user is connecting to on demand fleet. The user who has initiated connection to always on fleet will get instant connection to the streaming session. This is because the streaming instance is already up and running and it gives an instant connection experience to the user. Whereas for the on demand fleet, when the user initiates the connection, the standby instance starts up and will be prepared for the user session. This transition from standby state to running state can take anywhere between one to two minutes. Hence the user will have to wait for one to two minutes to get hold of the connection to the streaming instance. Once the standby instance transitions to the running state, the user can start the streaming session. This is how the connection experience varies between always on and on demand fleet. To summarize the user experience, for always on fleet, since the streaming instances are already up and running, the user gets an instant connection experience. Whereas for on demand fleet, the standby instances will be prepared for the session only when the user request comes in. This will result in a connection wait time of one to two minutes to start the actual session. When it comes to pricing for always on fleet, each running instance is charged at the regular hourly pricing based on the instance type. Whereas for on-demand fleet, since it might have both running and standby instances, the running instances are charged at the regular hourly pricing based on the instance type, whereas the standby instances are charged at a minimal fee of 2.5 cents per hour regardless of the instance type. Now let's dive a little deeper into pricing by considering a scenario where you are running graphics design X large instance type for both always on and on-demand fleets. Since these fleets are running graphics design X large instance type, each streaming instance will cost 50 cents per hour when it's running. And both the fleets are running four streaming instances on each. With this instance type, the running instances are billed at 50 cents per hour, whereas the standby instances are billed at 2.5 cents per hour, regardless of instance type. When the user request comes in, for always on fleet, as you can see, there is no change in pricing as the running instances are built regardless of the user connections. So the total cost for always on fleet will be the total cost of running four instances, which is $2 per hour. Whereas for on demand fleet, without any user connections, all the instances are built at 2.5 cents per hour. When the users initiates connection, the connection takes between one to two minutes and during this time, the instance transitions from standby state to running state. Once the instance is up and running, this is where two events happen. Number one, the pricing is transitioned from 2.5 cents per hour to the actual pricing, which is 50 cents per hour. Number two, the actual streaming session for the user starts. As you can see, this pricing transition only happens when the user request comes in. So for on-demand fleet, since there are two running instances and two standby instances, the total cost will be $1.05 per hour. Also remember that this price varies based on user connections to the fleet. 
Here is how the pricing differs between always on and on demand fleet. So with on demand option, customers can save a lot of money as they pay only 2.5 cents per hour for a standby instance and the actual billing starts only when the user request comes in. This is a very good option for customers if their demand is unpredictable and they can afford a 1 to 2 minute connection wait time. You also have the option to switch the fleet type between always on and on demand by stopping the fleet, changing the fleet type and starting it again. Apart from the fleet pricing, there is an additional RDS sale fee of $4.19 applied per user per month. For education based customers, this price could be discounted to $0.44. Cents. If you have existing CAL licenses, you can bring them to get this fee waived. The above pricing for this demo is based off US West 2 region in Oregon. For more information on pricing, please check out the links on the slide. You can also use our pricing calculator to get an estimate of your monthly bill. I hope you understood the difference between always on and on demand fleet types for AppStream 2.0 which will help you to make better choice for your business needs. Thanks for watching and happy cloud computing from all of us here at AWS.